1 Timothy 1 verse 1. Everybody say 1 Timothy 1 verse 1. So that you will remember that one. Hallelujah. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope. My brother, my sister, there cannot be a day that you are without hope unless Jesus Christ is not anymore in your life or with you because he himself is our hope so will you find yourself without hope no it's impossible in your emotions you could feel hopeless in your emotions you could feel discouraged in your emotions you could be negative you could feel depressed maybe but without hope, it is absolutely impossible if Christ is in your life. When you received Christ, you received hope. A living hope. Hope that is alive in your spirit. The challenge is that in my soul, I will not honor, first of all, how I feel in my soul and decide through my soul, I have hope or I have no hope. You can always, always, always come from a place of hope. Amen. Are you with me? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the command of God. My challenge to you for this year laying ahead. You are commanded by God for a certain function. For a certain function. Because you have hope. If there was no hope... God will not expect of you anything, anything. But because of the hope that he has given you in Christ Jesus, you can have everything. If you experience some discouragement or negativity, what needs to happen? Christ needs to be in that place. You need to put Jesus Christ in your situation, Jesus Christ in the emotion, in the, in the meeting tomorrow. Because if he's in the meeting, there's hope. So I can choose to turn my back on him by ignoring him. Then I ignore the eternal, unshakable hope that I have in that meeting, in that challenge, in that success, in that failure, in that crisis, in that opportunity. I can ignore the eternal, unshakable hope that I have. By ignoring Jesus Christ. But if I don't ignore him. I come from a place of an unshakable hope. About my future. About today. About that what God has for our lives. When you look at somebody and you feel discouraged. At your child. At your spouse. At your parents. Or somebody that you know that you really love. Come from that place of hope and see hope walking with him, with her. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. Let hope be alive in you so that it's not, I, I need to understand something before I have hope. No. Now I see how things work. Yes, now I have hope. No, 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 no. I have hope because I have him. If I don't understand what's happening, if I don't understand the process, if I don't have the answers for tomorrow, if I don't know what will be the final strategy, still I come from a place of hope. If I know the hope. So if you never come to the place of having a relationship with Christ, even though he's in your life, you have no relationship with hope. You can feel encouraged because you understand certain things. But it doesn't mean you have hope. Are you with me? That's why you, the hope that you have and what the world has is totally two different things. Totally, totally. For mankind, only in Christ Jesus, hope is found. Mankind on, on his way to hell to burn eternally in hell. 
But the hope is found in the person that took you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Amen. Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name. By the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope. I want to challenge you this morning. You know when I get into the word and I feel the word doesn't do something for me at that moment. It's okay. Because you are reading about hope. You are putting that hope in here. If you feel it in your emotions or not. Get into the word so that hope can be articulated through you. So that you can fill your life with hope. If you understand what you are reading or not, you bring it in here. The thoughts of hope. I don't want to go ahead with one of the months we will look at. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to give you a hopeful future. With these words. With what God says. It's just hope coming forth. Are you with me? So don't let your emotions or your own understanding take you away from reading and getting the words of hope in your heart. Amen. Now, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13. You can write that down. says what? If we just go back, Paul addressing this church in Corinth. In the, Corinth, the Corinthians, and in chapter 12, talking about the gifts and the working of, of the, the Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then also we find in chapter 14, a lot about how the Holy Spirit will work. And right in the center, Paul put 1 Corinthians 13, saying, you know, you can do everything. You can be so effectively spiritual and Give your whole life, but if, if there's no love, it's nothing. Then he explains everything about love, and at the end of everything, he says, now three remain. Faith, hope, love. Those three. And like we said in the past even, with the three, the first facet is love. Because of love. Because for God so loved the world, he gave them Hope, Jesus Christ. But if God didn't love us, no hope. So the foundation of hope is love. Because God was driven by himself. He could not, because in himself, love. God is love. Amen? And based on that love, there's hope. So if I can understand who my God is, I will understand hope. Because you understand that suddenly you realize there's a God who loves me and he gave his son Jesus Christ. Because you understood that, you took the step by faith and accepted Jesus Christ. You realize there's hope for your future. Because for God so loved you. Amen? Are you with me? So my challenge is, come to know the Lord. And then you understand hope. Come to know the Lord and you will understand hope. So if we say, I need to come to understand God who is love. So that based on that, I can understand my unshakable living hope. And from that place, step out in faith and do what God has called me to do. Love, hope, faith. Amen? The three foundations. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Now let's look at love. At the end of the day, what is Holy Spirit doing in our midst? The word says Holy Spirit is here to remind you of the words of Christ, to point to Jesus Christ, and to explain to you who he is. Now at the end of the day, through the Holy Spirit work in you, we see the fruit of the spirit the fruit the result of his dealings and his working in you we call that the fruit of the spirit and in the fruit of the spirit you can write down galatians 5 22 in galatians 5 22 we see love joy peace self-control patience 
faithfulness, goodness, kindness, gentleness. The fruit of the Spirit. And if you allow the Holy Spirit to work in you, you will more and more see and understand what hope is all about. He will explain to you hope. Your unshakable hope. Now we're just going to take a few minutes about this. First of all, we look at three, and I call it the, the energy, the passion, the vitality that you have coming from God. And that is love. Joy, peace. Love, joy, peace. When I look at love, the word says, we need to be driven by love. 2 Corinthians 5. We need to be driven by love. So God is love. And because of that love, there's hope. You know, you want to give people hope. Love them. You want to understand hope. Love yourself with God's love. Love God, love yourself, love others around you. And you will understand hope. There will be hope. Many times people in depression or total negativity, giving up on life, when they feel there's nobody loving me, there's no sense, why am I living? There's nobody that loves me. I hate myself and there's nobody else even loving me. You found hope when you realized he loves you. But also through people who accepted you and who started to love you. God decided that this energy, this passion, this vitality must be there. Between people and him and people and people. This must be the basis of relationship. There must be an energy between people. There must be an energy between God and people. And it's called love. 2 Corinthians 5, to be driven, driven by love. Not driven by fear, driven by resentment, driven by bitterness, driven by rage, by, driven by judgment, driven by hate. If you want to be driven by God, driven by an eternal hope, what will you do? Come to understand love. Say, Holy Spirit, open it up. Is it not Romans 5.5? 5, 5? Remember the high five. Remember Romans 5.5. 5. Holy Spirit has poured out the love of the Father in your hearts. The pouring of the love of God in your hearts. Romans 5.5. 5. Remember that. Okay? Amen. You with me? Come to know love and you come to understand more of hope. And then... Point number two, joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen? The word says in, through Nehemiah. Now what I'm saying, we are talking about the energy that God creates in you. First, it is his love that will drive you. Secondly, it's the joy of the Lord that will be your strength. I don't have strength anymore. You are tired. You don't have strength anymore. That's in your soul or in your body, maybe. But in your spirit, there will always be a strength because God is excited about you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Is it not the little boy, he's running, and dad is excited on the pavilion about his boy running. He's so excited. That's God with the race that he has set before you. Excited about you because he believes in you. He believes in what he created. And didn't create a mess up. We made a mess up. But if we yield back to him and follow him, we can walk with excellence. Why? I have hope because my father is excited about me. I have hope because there's an energy in God when he thinks about you. There's an excitement rising up in your God when he thinks about you, when he's calling you by name. And that is your strength. That is your strength. The strength in the context of relationship with God. Not based on the emotion in my soul, if I, if I feel encouraged or not, if I feel strengthened or not. No. 
not in that place. If I understand things or not. Yo, now I see how it, things work. Now I'm excited. No. Why sometimes in Christianity people see those droopy faces and they hear the word, but they don't understand Christ, our living hope. That God is giving you hope when you open this word, when somebody preaching, when somebody hearing, when you're singing the word of God. It's hope that is alive, available, but you can turn your back on it. You can ignore it. You can disrespect the hope. Why will I say I have no hope if I disrespect him? If you have respect for God, you have hope. If you respect his presence in you, that means you respect the fact that you have an unshakable hope. Because he is your hope. Amen. So just based on respect, you accept that you have hope. You can tell yourself the facts. Facts. I feel like that. Be honest. Maybe you feel negative. You feel depressed. You can criticize. You feel you have some issues. Maybe that's the facts. But then deal with the facts in the light of the truth and the truth is i have hope in christ jesus and the truth will set me free from this stuck in the mud situation with all the facts that i'm going through but don't honor the facts more than what you will honor the truth amen you are called to be victorious and so you will be so you will live in jesus name amen you with me the joy of the lord is your Strength, God cheering you on. Let it be so. We are talking about vitality, the excitement, the energy, the passion from Him. That the Holy Spirit is working in you. Love, joy, and the last one, peace. Peace beyond all understanding. In the emotion, in the place of stress. Beyond my understanding, where according to my understanding, I'm supposed to stress. I'm supposed to have fear. I'm supposed to have anxiety. Be anxious of nothing. Philippians 4 verse 6. Be anxious of nothing, but let your requests all be made known before God. Hello, 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 with thanksgiving. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will God, will protect, will be the final say. Peace of God will protect. Nothing can harm you. Nothing can harm your heart. Nothing can harm and destroy your mind. Distraction in your mind, distraction in your heart cannot happen because the peace of God is the final authority over you. Oh, the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind so that you will be guided by His peace. Guided by His peace. You read the word, and you know in here there's a peace. In your soul there's turmoil. Don't ask Holy Spirit to show you the difference. Because in soul, many times when God leads you, soul can manifest and throw a tantrum. And then you could say, I don't have peace. You need to understand your eternal hope. Based on fear and anxiety, you can say, I don't have peace. Uh -uh -uh. Come to know the word. So that more and more in your life, you can say, I feel anxious about this, but I know that the peace of God is guiding me there. When you start to come into that place, you are growing. Then you are really growing. If you can start to distinguish between what is from soul, what is from spirit. The word of God, a two-edged sword. That first of all, divide what is from the spirit and what is from the soul. If you come to know the word, this is what you will see. You never come into that place, you know you don't know the word of God. But if the word is alive in you and is coming alive in you, more and more you will stand before challenges to realize this is soul, this is spirit. This is what God is doing in my spirit. This is what the enemy is doing in my soul. Are you with me? May God help you, lead you to follow the path. Of the eternal hope of Jesus Christ. But I sometimes feel only peace when I'm in control. When I feel I can figure these things out. 
I have peace because I understand. I have peace because I understand two plus two is four. But sometimes with God, the two plus two isn't four. Are you with me? Because God is jealous for you to focus on him. For you to focus on him. To focus on him. So he's interested, not first of all, for you to understand everything. Because of you trying to understand everything, he knows that you're going to make a mess. But he's interested in you walking with him. So sometimes he will organize that you don't understand everything. Many times. So that you will realize, I need the Lord. <laughs> Because sometimes we want to understand to be in control. But God will keep certain understanding away from you so that you will just have to say, God, I trust you by faith. I come to you. You are my hope. God will help you. Amen. That is the vitality, the energy that you have coming from the eternal hope, Jesus Christ, through the work of the Spirit. We call it driven by love. Against fear. Perfect love drives out all fear. Must you fight the fight? No. Love will fight against fear. Not I must deal with fear and I'm fighting against the fear. The battle belongs to the Lord. The Lord is called love. And love will fight the fear. And perfect love drives out the fear. Not you. Hello? Perfect love. Let's say perfect love in my life drives out all fear. Amen. And so, once again, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Who is standing? Who is standing? Who is fighting against the depression, the negativity, the anxiety, and all those stuff? The joy of the Lord is standing against that. The Prince of Peace is standing against anxiety and distress. The Prince of Peace. And allow the peace of God to fight against, to take that anxiety captive, so that the Prince of Peace can move in and say, I'm protecting the mind. I'm protecting your heart. I'm in control. Your eternal hope. The second one. First facet, vitality. Second facet, stability. A stability that the Holy Spirit will work in you because of your unshakable living hope, Jesus Christ. Stability. First facet, self-control. The self-control is not you in control, but understanding how to give him control over the self in you. Are you with me? It's God in control. And self-control not based on, I'm understanding everything. Self-control not because I know exactly what to do. No. Self-control, because I know the one standing right in front of me, Jesus Christ, my shepherd. Not because I understand exactly the road that he's going to take me with. I will follow, but I must just make a very responsible decision. How is the road ahead, Lord? Just show me. Show me. Is it very rocky? Is it, is it wet? Is it slippery? Is it a lot down? Is it up? Is it through thorns and thistles and, and bushes? Is it... And because... You want to make a responsible decision. No. Have faith like a little child. Come closer to him. You know the, the guide when you are in a crisis in the mountains. And the guide, the guide, will tell you, don't fear, don't stress, just follow me. And then the guy in the world says, no, 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 no I'm not prepared to follow you. Uh, first, explain to me exactly what you're going to do. Where is the road doing what and when, what, 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 what. They will say, are you crazy, man? The rest will say, are you crazy? Now, why would we do that with Jesus? And I first need to understand everything before I really follow. It's not just in principle to follow. But out there, follow the living hope into your meeting, into your situation, into your financial challenge. Follow the living hope into that place. Don't enter without the living hope. Come right in front of you. Amen? Let that be so in Jesus' name. Self-control. A control from God. Secondly, 
and to him faithfulness. 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 We're talking about stability. Stability that doesn't matter what. If your boss is, I cannot say boss is bad. If your boss is bossy. <laughs> if he's... Uh, if he's cheating you, if he's talking behind your back, if his things are unfair with the people that you work with, you have a stability through the work of the Holy Spirit because you have an unshakable living hope. Why? Faithfulness. Whatever you do, do it all as if unto the Lord. So I do as if that disgustable doings, dealings of the boss as if he is the Lord. <laughs> you don't feel like thinking that. No, not him. But you focus on the living hope. You have hope in your situation because what you do, you do as if unto him. That's your faithfulness. Faithfulness tested when you have a lot of reasons why not to be faithful. The man with the one talent, two talents, five talents. man with the one talent, he had a lot of reasons why not to be faithful. And he was right, but still. Faithfulness was tested when there wasn't people looking. When the leader was gone. Your two talents must become four. Your five talents must become ten. You must be faithful to be fruitful. Let's say faithful to be fruitful. That's what God wants to bring in you. But there's no fruitfulness in you. There's no faithfulness in you if things don't grow. If a godliness in you does not become more. If you're not coming into a place of less sin and more of God. There's not faithfulness. But faithfulness, you do what you do as if unto the Lord. Amen. We're talking about stability. And the last one in stability, patience. You are able to keep on. The other word is long suffering. You are able to suffer long. But suffer in the right way. Long suffering they're talking about. Count it all joy. James 1. Yeah? You with me? Count it all joy for the privilege. And you will suffer long. Not I have faith to suffer long. No, no, no. I have patience, I have long suffering because I know I have an eternal living hope. The future is good. Everything will work for the good. Everything will work for the best because of what God has for my life. So because I have that hope and I know it's in Christ Jesus, whatever I go through at the end of the day, God will use it for his glory. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it for our good. It will happen. And because I have that faith, I have that hope, I have the capacity to go through that, what my flesh is calling suffering. What my spirit is calling gain. My spirit is calling it gain. My flesh is calling it, calling it suffering. Stability. That is the stability. You will be able to mount up as an eagle. You are able to go from glory to glory. From strength to strength. Understand this is what the Holy Spirit wants to work in you. Because in this detail of coming to know Jesus Christ. Yeah. You will understand the living hope. The long suffering. He was prepared to go and to suffer through the death even on the cross. And even today, he has, he has patience with you. 2 Peter 3, 9. God is patient over us. And he wants everybody to be able to be saved. Hello? So in that, what is God suffering? To see what his children is going through. To see what's happening in the nations. He's not excited about that. He's not excited about the fact that you can sometimes miss out on so many that he has for you. Are you with me? But he has this patience with you. He has this patience with you. As you met me, are you still here? 
Okay, third one. We have vitality, we have stability. Third one, quality. There's a quality that God always wants to work in you, an excellence, excellence, excellence that will come through. When you understand the living hope and he's living in and through you, excellence will be there. That's the third one that you can write down. And under excellence, we find kindness, gentleness, goodness. Kindness. It's that is all about God's hospitality. The beauty of his grace that you can be welcome with him. The beauty of a father saying, come my son, come my daughter, you are welcome. Is it not Jeremiah 31, verse 3, that says, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have drawn you with my loving kindness. So that loving kindness that I've drawn you with, God says, My hospitality, my welcome that I have for you. That when people look at your life, they must know, I'm welcome with God. They don't say, hell, I will never make it. These Christians, all the stuff that you must do right. They didn't see, first of all, the law. They saw the loving kindness of God that is drawing them unto him. Why? Because he loved them with an everlasting love. Amen? Are you with me? Praise the Lord. Loving kindness. Second one, gentleness or meekness. The meek or the gentle will inherit the earth. The meek or the gentle will inherit the earth. Why? Gentleness has to do with I'm open to change. I'm open to change. I'm teachable. There's a gentleness in me. Not a hardness to stand on my opinion. Not the thing of this is what I believe and that's finished. Be careful. You have something to find how to stand in faith against the enemy. But how to change by faith under God's guidance. Sometimes people stand on one thing because they fear they will lose what they have. Sometimes you need a lot of faith to be open to change. Because we can feel secure when everything stays the same. Are you with me? But if you have a gentleness in you, not an irresponsibility, to be irresponsible in, your, in what you do, then it's this, then it's that, then it's that, then it's that. No, 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 no. Under God's guidance, a gentleness, a soft tenderness, of knowing Holy Spirit is saying, no. Holy Spirit is saying, go here. Holy Spirit is not giving me peace about this. There's a gentleness combined with humility. And it gives you a teachable spirit. Now, how is God, God's gentleness? Are we talking about finding out who is this living hope? He's gentle. So is he changing? Because God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Now, what does it mean, the gentleness of God? God, why, how can we say God is flexible? I can be flexible without being in a place of compromise. You find something that we call compromise that is wrong, you find a place to be flexible. Example, so here's Israel, tempting God ten times by murmuring, moaning, groaning. And here at the Jordan, God says, you will not enter my rest. You will not enter because of ten times you've murmured now. And God, in his gentleness, not just Israel had to turn away for 40 years. God turned away from Canaan with them. And the plan changed based on their hardness of heart. But God himself went another 40 years through the desert with them. For 365 days times 40 years. That's quite a lot of days. God still provided. 
the manna and the quails. That wasn't plan A. That wasn't his original plan. But in God's gentleness, in God's meekness, he's still walking the road with you, even though he must go with you through the wilderness, not plan A. Even though he must follow you in your plan B. He's still with you in your plan B. Because he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. That is because of the meekness of God. The gentleness of God. That's why he's even providing for you. While you are busy with plan B, C, D and E. Hello. Still the cloud against the sun in the day. Still the fire at night against the cold. Still the, the shoes that didn't he for slight. He didn't force light. What what is uh, your shoes that will like you remember in the desert? Their shoes for all those years, uh, nothing wrong. They walked with those shoes in the desert and everything was was there. Right. God's provision was there in every facet. His presence was there in every facet. He manifested himself still for that 40 years in the desert. God's gentleness, God's meekness. May people know, and may you always remember, don't put your, that self-condemnation on yourself. Don't judge others. Because God in his meekness is willing to walk with you again and again. You will miss out and it's, it's, it's not lacquer for him. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. To see you suffer through things that is not from him. But he will be with you. He will be with you. Because he has the faith that you will come to your senses. To hear his heart. To hear what he's saying. And to go by faith over the Jordan. Into what he has for you. Amen. May God help you. May God help you. And the last one. Goodness. God is good. Sometimes you find the testimony. People say. Yeah, God just proved his goodness because he did this and he did this. I trusted him for this and it happened. Oh, God is good. You know, if it happened or didn't happen, God is good. Doesn't matter what happened around you. God doesn't have to prove himself to be good. And you're sitting on some other throne and that he must prove himself to be good. God is always good. You go through circumstances maybe and you feel it's like hell on earth. It's frustrating and it's like a lot of rubbish happening around you and maybe even in you. But still, God is good. You have a hope. Because God in you is only, he has only one thing for you. That what is good. When he spoke day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day five six. And he spoke and he saw what, he, what happened. It was good. You allow God to speak through the word in you, in you, in you. Day one, two, three, four, five, six. What he is speaking in you, it is good. His word will not return empty to him. It will fulfill what it was sent for, Isaiah 55. Hey? And it will be good. But you can choose to receive the word from the enemy. The word from your flesh. The word from the temptation. The word from all these other geikies. And it will not be good. Now what is happening? You need to start to receive his word so that you can understand everything that he does is good. The goodness of God is in here, in your spirit. But you can choose to align your heart with your circumstances and your flesh and your temptations. Or you can choose to align your heart with the fullness of God that is in your spirit. To align your heart to the eternal, unshakable hope that is in your spirit. You can choose what you will do with your heart. Guard your heart more than anything else. Because from there is the spring of life. You with me? God's going to help you and me, I believe. And then... When he breathed into that mud that he formed with his hand, he said it wasn't good. It was a very good. That muddy situations that you are getting stuck into, 
muddy situations that you could get stuck into, even in your personality or in weaknesses and things. Allow God to put his hands in that. Because he will deal with that and let it look like him. And when he breathed in you through his spirit, he will say, that area in your life that was muddy, or that you got stuck, very good. What he do and what he will do there is very good. Amen. Oh God, come and change us, come and help us. To see that what is from you, God help us to walk in your goodness by allowing your hand to move in and through us. So we pray. God, we receive you as our eternal, living, unshakable hope. Forgive us for many times ignoring the hope by honoring our emotions, where our emotions or our thought patterns could evaluate we have hope or not. God, even though by facts we could feel discouraged or negative sometimes, we choose to deal with the facts in the light of the truth. We will honor and believe and respect the truth that you in us, living in us, Jesus Christ, our eternal hope. We will respect your presence. And we will deal with our emotions and circumstances and our ideas in the light of who you are, our eternal hope. Thank you for that, Father. Oh, God, I pray for the outpouring of your love through the Holy Spirit in every man, every woman in this place right now. And that your peace will guard them, will protect their hearts and their minds. Lord, that your joy, that they will hear their Father being excited about them. That your joy will be their strength. That they will stand under your control. Even if emotions will feel they are out of control. God, I pray that they will be faithful. Be found faithful through the Holy Spirit. I pray that they will understand patience. How to walk with an expectancy of what you're going to do. God, I pray that your kindness will be part of our lives. So that we can stand as ambassadors of Christ. Showing that people are welcome with you, Lord, through the blood of Christ. God, I pray that gentleness will be part of us. We will be teachable, 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 having the faith to change. And at the end of the day, that doesn't matter what, Lord, we declare you are a good God. Your goodness, your goodness is alive in our hearts. Thank you for your awesome goodness. Thank you for your awesome goodness. And I pray that everyone here will receive that. In Jesus' name, so we pray. And all say, Amen. 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 Amen.